Hello all and welcome to Mobile Device Manager Plan Training. My name is Naveen and I will be your trainer for the week. Now let's take a look at our training schedule. Last week we had a training on app management and device security. This week we will be dealing with device enrollment and device provisioning. Here is our training agenda. First, we would have a brief overview of the Mobile Device Manager Plus product. A general introduction about what MDM is, its architecture, the ports, and how MDM would manage your mobile devices. We would also be focusing on one key aspect today, which is device enrollment. It is the first step that any IT administrator has to perform in order to manage their devices. And enrolling mobile devices comes in two parts devices that are in use, and freshly procured devices. Then we would be discussing on distributing configurations to your managed devices, wherein we would go through some basic policies to make the device you know, ready for corporate use. And also we would look into something wherein you can prevent unauthorized access of your exchange servers. This is to make sure that all of your email, you know, services or even your documents are stored within the MDM container itself. And hailing from an MDM tech support background, I've handpicked a few scenarios in reference with the above mentioned topics, along with some questions that were asked during the previous training session. Let's get started with our first agenda. Now, our first topic would be Overview of the Mobile Device Manager Plus. So Mobile Device Manager Plus is, supports well-known operating systems like Apple's iOS, Chrome OS for Chromebook, Windows for Windows tablets or Windows 10 machines, your Android phones and tablets as well. And how is the MDM available? Well, the MDM is present as a standalone solution that is supported on on-premise as well as the cloud platform. It is also available as an add-on along with a flagship product called Desktop Central, which is used to manage legacy computers, thereby completing a unified endpoint management solution. And not, last but not least, we also have an MSP edition as well for our MSP customers. Now for the integration. So a product that works alone is not the best. You'd always like to integrate so that from the same portal, you can access multiple different solutions. So this is where we bring in our integration capabilities. We can integrate with ticketing tools like Spiceworks and Service Test Plus, which is one of our managed engine's own products, wherein you can integrate the MDM service and perform a lot of actions from those particular tools itself. We can also integrate with our system products like Zoho Creator and Zoho CRM, Namely, in a case wherein you can create your own applications using Zoho Creator and distribute it through the MDM solution, or you can secure your sales-related documents by integrating with Zoho CRM. So there are a lot of opportunities when you go for integration. Now for the Mobile Device Manager Plus architecture. MDM has adopted the universal architecture, which comprises of three main components mobile devices that are owned by you, MDM service that is provided by us, and the notification services that are maintained by the device vendor. Namely, Apple push notification service, Google's Firebase cloud messaging, and Windows's Windows-based notification services. For communication, the MDM server leverages on the notification services to wake up the mobile devices which in turn gets in touch with your server directly, thereby completing the communication cycle. As mobile devices are always on the go, the MPM service has to be exposed to the internet in order to maintain constant device contact. So as a security measure, we have provided a secure gateway add-on which forwards the device request to the server, thereby securing it from any external threats. And you can also integrate your Active Directory services with the MDM server for device authentication and assignment purposes, something that we would be discussing more about in today's session. 
And now for the ports used by the MDM solution. The main port that you would have to look into if you're going for an on-premise edition is the port 9383. So this is the device to mobile device manager plus server communication, and it's an inbound port which has to be open. If you're using the cloud solution uh, or even the on-premise, any other request would take place through your HTTPS port, which is 443 and generally opened in all company networks. So this completes the architecture, but how are the devices managed? Well, for Android, we use the MDM application itself to manage the devices, while for your iOS, Windows, or Chromebooks, we would make use of the native clients that are provided by the device vendors to manage the devices itself. So let's take a quick look at the MDM product. So there might be a lot of you know, new um, prospects or customers who have just joined in who want to know how the product looks like and how it feels. So this is our product dashboard. We have home tab where you have a neat display of all the predefined details that you'd like to have, like the number of devices that are enrolled, platform summary, app summary, etc. You then have your device management tab, which is kind of like your powerhouse of the MDM solution. You perform all your configurations, app deployment, remote control, conditional exchange access. Everything that is key or integral about the MDM solution itself would be present under your device management tab. You then have inventory where you have a stock of all of your devices that has been enrolled with the MDM solution, wherein you can perform various actions on your devices as well. You then have the enrollment tab, wherein you can enroll devices in order to get them into the MDM solution. You have your BYOD, your corporate enrollment, a lot of which we would be discussing about in today's session. And then you have your reports tab, wherein you can generate predefined or custom reports based on the details that are collected from your mobile devices itself. And last but not least, you have your admin tab. So as an administrator, you are free to go around this tab, make any configurations that you'd like. It might be in the NAS settings, it might be the device privacy as to what details we can collect, or user administration as to who or which person can access the MDM at what level. And at last, you have the support tab. So if you are running into any difficulties or if you have any quick questions that you'd like to ask, we are always available on chat and you can use the support tab to raise any requests. So that being said, let's move back into our presentation. And this wraps up our first topic for the day. Now it's time to dive into enrolling the mobile devices into the MDM simulation in order to manage. So let's take a quick example over here. So I am part of an organization called Azilker. I'm the IT administrator, and my company has given me a set of devices to enroll and manage with the MDM solution. So there are two types of devices over here, devices that are already in use, and new devices that are freshly procured from your resellers or from the device vendors directly. So first we would be dealing with how you can enroll devices that are already in use. And for that, we have certain enrollment options available, which is enrolling the device using enrollment via invite or your self-enrollment option. So what are the benefits of enrolling using enroll via invite or the self-enrollment option? First, it creates a container where you have your personal space and corporate space and all of the MDM applications would be in the corporate space alone. You can then prevent unauthorized data access, which means any application that is on the personal side cannot reach over to your corporate side and collect any of the application details or even your email documents. And last, you can restrict the sharing of corporate data to any personal device or cloud storage solutions that you might have. So now we would go into our first topic, which is enrollment with invites. So enrollment with invites works in this particular flow. The admin, who's me, would send out an enrollment invite to the user. The user would accept the invitation, which would be over email. 
he or she would scan the QR code or access the atomic URL in order to register the device with the MDM solution. So to perform this action, I would have to go into the MDM tab over here. So let's take an example where I would have to enroll an iOS device into the MDM solution. So I go into Enrollment tab. I would go to Devices page. Here I have Enroll Device option, and I would choose iOS device. Before this, you would have to create or configure something called as the APMS certificate which is the Apple Push Notification Services. In order to secure your communication between the MDM server to the devices. So this is something that you would have to do on Apple's end. So I have already set up an APNS certificate on the, the training server that you see. So let me take you to another photo where I still haven't created it. So over here, I would have to create a new Apple ID first. So this you would have to make sure that you use a corporate Apple ID so that every year you would have to renew this token. You would have to download a CSR file and then sign in to the Apple push notification services in order to upload this particular file. So once you upload the downloaded CSR file in the Apple push notification services, they would provide you with a PEM file or something like a token. And that token has to be uploaded over here in the MDM. Along with the corporate Apple ID, that was used to create this token. And you can also mention other email addresses to notify when this APNS is going to expire. And as I mentioned, you would have to renew it every year, and you would have to use the same Apple ID if you don't want to lose connection of your devices. So once all of these details are filled out, you can click on Upload and you would find a tab similar to this. So once you have completed this process, you can then go ahead and send out enrollment invites to your users. So I go into Apple, I use iOS devices over here, and here I have two options, the Buy Myself option and the Through User Invites option. Both are of the same characteristics. So if you have or if the administrator, which is myself, I have the device with me, I can go with the buy myself option. I can choose the tag, whether it's owned by the, you know, the person who has provided the device or by the corporate, and I can assign it to a group as well. Or if I'd like to send an email over to the user and they can perform the actions, then that can be done as well. So over here, you have to select the user type, whether they are a local user, or a domain user. A local user is a user whose username and email address would be stored within the MDM itself. So they are not attached to any domains whatsoever. But if you're going for a domain user, then you would have to integrate your Active Directory services with the MDM. So it can be an Azure on, it can be an Azure AD, an on-premise AD, or a hybrid AD that can be integrated with the MDM itself. So once that is done, you would choose the domain over here, select the domain as well, and you would choose your users. So once you have choose the particular user, you can click on that, and then you can send out an enrollment invite. The enrollment invite would be something similar to this. So the enrollment invite would have a QR code and a URL. The user is free to use either the QR code or the URL in their devices. So once that is done, we will see how the device processes that particular request. So on the device, once they have scanned the QR code, we would automatically take them to the next step. So all they have to do is click on continue. Click on continue while the MDM profile installation takes place hit allow, and the profile would be installed. So this is the native client that I was talking about in order to manage your iOS devices. So this profile or the device management profile would help us to manage the mobile devices itself. So once the enrollment is complete, your devices would be successfully enrolled with the MDM solution. So the step that I just mentioned would suffice if you're sending out emails to each and every user. 
But if you'd like to enroll devices in a bulk, wherein you'd like to send out a bulk enrollment request, then you can go under Enrollment Devices, choose this option over here and go for bulk enrollment, wherein you can upload a CSV file containing the username, domain name, email address, and the platform type, and the group name as well. So automatically, all the user details under that CSV file would get an email, and once they process their devices, their devices would be added to the respective groups. And that is an integral part because if the groups are predefined with profiles and applications, automatically, within seconds, those profiles and applications would be applied to your devices. So this is how you go about performing bulk enrollments for your users. Now for self-enrollment option. So self-enrollment option is where the user, the end users themselves, access the self-enrollment ring from the service portal, which would in turn request for their Active Directory credentials. So once they provide their Active Directory credentials, we would run through it with our database, we would check for it, and once it has been approved, we would register the device with the MDM solution. So to perform that, as I mentioned, you'd have to integrate your Active Directory services with the MDM itself. And once it has been integrated, you would move into the self-enrollment tab. So over here, you have your link that is generated for the service, for your service alone. So when your end users access this particular link, they would be going through the enrollment process itself. And the best part is you can also segregate this, whether you'd like this enrollment to be a, available for all 80 groups, whether you'd like to specifically exclude a few, or whether you'd like to perform this enrollment option only for selective number of 80 groups itself. And based on the platform, whether they are Apple, Windows, or Android devices, we can group them in different groups. And once the enrollment process has been complete, as I mentioned, the devices would automatically land in their respective groups. So this is how the enrollment process would go through in your devices itself. So when the user clicks on the particular link, they would automatically be taken to a portal where they'd have to install the application or provide the server URLs. So once they have provided the URL, they would have to provide a username and password, which is their AD username and password for authentication. And upon authentication, their devices would be successfully enrolled with the MDM solution. So we have discussed in detail as to how you can enroll devices that are already in use. And I would also like to take this opportunity to mention that we have a chat team available who would be answering all of your questions. So if there are any questions regarding any topics that we, have, that we are going to discuss today, you can always drop it in the chat. So now for enrolling new devices. So what are the tasks that you'd have to go forward with? It? You'd have to complete the initial setup manually. And admin or user intervention is required for the enrollment itself, so which is a tricky part. So that's why we have brought in automated enrollment methods for you in order to ease your way into managing these mobile devices. So for iOS, you have your Apple Configurator Enrollment, your Apple Business Manager Enrollment, formerly known as DEP, or Device Enrollment Program. Then under Android, you have a similar type, which is your EMM Token Enrollment, and the competitor of Apple Business Manager, which is Zero Touch Enrollment, to enroll your Android-based devices. So what are the benefits of an automated enrollment process? Well, you can silently install applications, be it your store-based application or your enterprise application, as they are completely controlled by the MDM solution, the devices themselves, you can perform silent app installation. You can lock the devices down in kiosk mode, something that we were discussing last training session, 
wherein you can lock the device down to run just the specific applications that you would like. And also you would have full support of all the profiles and configurations that are made available by the MDM solution. So let's go with our first enrollment, automated enrollment, I would say, for the day, which is the Apple Configurator enrollment. So this is how it works. You install and set up the Apple Configurator on a Mac machine. So it's only available in your Mac stores and that particular application has to be installed on a Mac machine. You would then manually connect your devices via USB to your Mac machine and then activate the device using your Apple Configurator, followed by which the devices would get registered with the MDM solution. So, to go ahead with the Apple Configurator, you would first have to set up the Apple Configurator part for the enrollment, which is you'd have to add the MDM server details and also configure the iOS setup assistant. So, over here, under enrollment, you'd find a particular tab on the left side. And over there you have Apple with your two enrollment processes that I was talking about. And Apple Configurator is the one that we are discussing right now. So you have your configuration steps laid out over here as to how you can go ahead and set up the Apple Configurator services. So since I am on a Mac machine right now, it takes the liberty to move into the Apple Configurator service and I have a device already set up. So there are two ways in going forward with this. Either you can set up the device or prepare the device directly or to ease your process more when you're connected multiple devices, you can create blueprints. So all I'd have to do is now is to create a new blueprint for you guys. So I'm going into the Apple Configurator, edit blueprint options. I click on the new blueprint. I would give it a meaningful name. And once this is done, I would prepare the blueprint. So the first is to supervise your devices. And we also have another option over here, which is to add the device into the device manage or device enrollment program, one that we would be discussing more in the session down below. So once this is done, I would click on next. Here, I would have to provide the MDM server details. So I have already added my server details, but I can create a new server as well. I click on next. I would have to give a meaningful name. And then I would have to fetch the server URL, which would be displayed on your MDM solution. So on the fifth page over here, you would find the MDM server URL. You would copy it. You would move back into the Apple Configurator and paste the new server details. Once this is done, would set up the server, the trust certificates that you have uploaded in the server would be fetched. You can click on next. Your organization details, you can provide them as per your needs. If you'd like, you can go ahead and sign into your device enrollment program, one that I would be discussing down the line. But if I don't want to go into the device enrollment program, I can again set it up freshly. So I just like to supervise the device, hit on next, Server details are the same, organization are the same, and all I want is to just enroll the devices. I don't want to go through any initial setup process at all. So I would go to don't show any steps because I don't want the pressure to go ahead and configure each and every details. So once that is done, I would prepare my blueprint. And once I have prepared my blueprint, I would click on done, and all I have to do now is to double click on this device and prepare the device, which is if you're going to manually prepare each and every device or apply the profile if you don't want to go through the same process. So once the profile is applied or once the blueprint is applied, automatically your devices would be enrolled with the MDM solution. And the enrollment process would be something similar to this. So on the device over here, you would first go into the device activation page, which is the hello screen. You would choose the Wi-Fi network 
and then you would apply the configuration. Once the configuration is applied, you won't go through any initial steps and automatically your devices would land on the home page itself. So once a device has been enrolled, you can assign users to your devices so that each and every user has their own specific device itself. So take for example, you have um, you know, any enrollment page. So once the enrollment is complete, you can assign a user. It can be a local user or a domain user as well. You can choose from which domain you'd like to you know, fetch the user details and then assign the user to them as well. And you can assign it to different groups so that they automatically land in the respective groups. Now for EMM token enrollment. So this is the counterpart of the Apple configurator enrollment on Android side. So EMM token enrollment is where the device would automatically install the MDM app using the DPC identifier that you provide, followed by which you would scan the QR code. And once the QR code is scanned, the device would get registered with the MDM solution. So over here, we are in the EMM token page. If I click on the scan QR link, I would automatically be presented with the DPC identifier and the QR code that is generated specifically for my service. So this identifier that you see over here, once it's provided in the device as the default Google account, Google will recognize that token and would automatically install our MDM application. So once the MDM application is installed, all you have to do is just scan this QR code and automatically your device would be enrolled. And you would have to note that this particular enrollment process is supported from 6.0 and above versions. So once the device is enrolled, all you have to do is assign a user. But Let's take a case wherein you already know the serial numbers of the devices that you're going to enroll, and there are around 100 devices. So instead of going to each and every device and assigning users to them, you can upload a CSV file prior to your enrollments with the serial number or the IMEI and the user details, namely the username, email address, and the group name that are mandatory while uploading the CSV. So once a device checks in with the MDM service, we would check for the serial number or the IMEI, map it to the right user, and also map the device to the right group. So your assignment process is automatic and the devices would be assigned to the right group as well. And this is how your EMM token enrollment would work. So we are on the device home screen, as I mentioned, you would provide AFW hashtag MEMDM, which is the DPC token provided to us by Google. Google would recognize that token and would install our application. So you would open the MEMDM app and then scan the QR code that would be displayed on your server screen. So this completes the Apple configurator and the EMM token enrollment part. Now for the next phase is when my organization is growing at a rapid rate and they have purchased around 500 new devices. So just think of the pressure over here. You'd have to unbox each and every device. You'd either have to plug it to a Mac machine or enter the DPC token details and enroll them into the MDM. So how can we automate this even more? That's where our solutions, which is your Apple Business Manager, or your Zero Touch Enrollment programs would come into play. But you need to have certain prerequisites in place where you have to set up the a ABM or the Apple Business Manager account with Apple or the Zero Touch Enrollment account with Google. And then these specific devices have to be directly purchased from your device vendors, Apple or Google, or from authorized resellers. So for the first enrollment task, we would look at Apple Business Manager. So you would have to integrate your MDM server with the ABM portal, which would in turn, you know, pull in all of your device details. 
And for that, you would have to add your devices in the ABM portal. So if you have purchased the devices directly from a reseller or from Apple, they would approve those devices and fetch those details. What we would do is when we integrate with the ABM, we would fetch those device details. And on activating these devices, which means by just turning them on, those devices would be registered with the MDM solution. So over here in the panel or in the MDM solution under enrollment, you have the Apple enrollment program. So the Apple enrollment program is nothing but your Apple business manager, wherein you can add multiple services, servers that can be generated in your ABM and also sync the devices in as well. So for that, to add the server, the ABM server with the MDM, all you have to do is, as I mentioned, move into the enrollment tab, navigate to Apple enrollment part, and then you'd have to download the PEM file that we provide. So once you have downloaded this PEM file, you'd have to sign in to your Apple Business Manager portal. So over here in your Apple Business Manager portal, you'd have to move into settings. And once you have moved into settings, you can find your device details. Over here, you would add MDM server, which would take you to a particular page where you have to create a new MDM server. So you can provide the server details and also upload the public key that was just downloaded from the MDM solution. So once he has uploaded and filled out the right details, you can generate a new server token. And this new server token can be downloaded from the ABM service, followed by which you would have to upload it in the MDM. You would get an error like this from the on the ABM portal. No need to worry. You can go ahead. You can download the server token and you can upload the server token onto your MDM service. I would also have to say that you can provide an email ID to notify you when the token is going to expire. As any token that comes along with Apple would expire in a year, so you would need to renew it every year. So once the token has been uploaded and the details have been filled, you can click on the upload option and your token would be uploaded. The last part is wherein you can go through some configuration changes. So just like how you had skipped all the configuration steps under your Apple configurator option, the same options would be available for your Apple Business Manager as well. You have an additional option wherein you can authenticate and auto-assign devices based on device activation itself, wherein the user would have to provide their AD credentials and automatically we would authenticate the devices and assign them to the right user. So once you click on create, as you have seen on the previous screen, an MDM server will be added to your service itself. So this is your MDM server under your Apple Business Manager. And this is where you would have to add the devices in first. So first you would add the devices from that you have purchased from say Apple or from the resellers, you'd have to drop the CSV file or the order number that they have provided in order to activate those devices. So this is where you go ahead and provide all the details, the serial number, order number, or the CSV file that is provided by Apple or the resellers. You then have to choose the action. As soon you have to assign it to the MDM server that has been integrated with the MDM service. So once that is done, automatically all the device details would be fetched. So once the device details are fetched, you don't have to perform any actions on the device then. You just have to turn on the device and automatically the device itself would figure out that there is a configuration waiting for it and would install the configuration from the MDM service. And once that is done, it would cut through all the initial steps and land on the welcome to iPhone page. So that would complete the enrollment process itself. No need of any Macs, no need of any other solutions or connecting the device to the Mac machine. All you'd have to do is just turn on and 
assign the user once the enrollment process is completed. So you'd find a similar step or a similar process, I would call it, when you go for the zero touch enrollment. So just like how Apple has Apple Business Manager, Google are not gonna lag behind. They are gonna come around with their own enrollment program, which is the zero touch enrollment. So all you have to do is set up the Android for call, sorry, the zero touch portal or the zero touch enrollment account with Google. You would have to create an MDM configuration in that particular portal and assign the MDM configuration to the devices that you have purchased directly from Google or from well-known device vendors. And once that is done, on turning on these devices. So these devices can be anywhere in the world. All they need is to just reach the MDM server. So just on turning on these devices, those devices would get registered with the MDM solution. And this is where you would find your zero touch portal. So over here under enrollment, you have zero touch enrollment, and you'd find the enrollment steps over here as well. So for your zero touch portal, once you have created an account with Google and you have your zero touch portal, this is how the portal looks like. So you have a configuration tab that I was talking about wherein you'd have to provide the MDM server details and then assign the configuration to the group of devices that you would like to enroll. So you would create a new configuration for the devices and then you would provide all of the details over here. So you'd have to copy a particular JSON data for the configuration that is present in the MDM solution. So you click on copy and then you paste the same on the configuration file. So once that has been configured, all you have to do is just add the devices in to your same particular zero touch enrollment pro portal and you'd have to apply the configuration. So just choose the group of devices and apply the configuration to those groups of devices. And once that is done, all you'd have to do is just turn on the power button the device would get connected to a Wi-Fi service and would automatically start collecting all the details. Google will say that, hey, this device has to be managed by MDM. So it would automatically set up your device, install the MDM application, and would complete the enrollment process itself. So this would typically mean by just turning on these 500 devices or 1,000 devices that your company has newly procured, your devices would be completely enrolled in the MDM solution and they would be called as supervised or device owner devices, which means you as an administrator would have complete control of your devices. So this brings us to the end of the enrollment part of our free training. So since there are a lot of enrollment steps, we weren't able to cover a lot. So this is just a small map to show you how the devices can be enrolled. So under already in use devices, you have invite, wherein you can send bulk enrollment requests or individual requests, and you also have the self-enrollment option. While for the new devices, well, there's, there's quite a lot. For iOS, we have Apple Configurator, ABM. For Android, we discuss EMM token and ZTE. While we also have other enrollment options like NFC enrollment, Knox Mobile Enrollment, and if certain customers are out there who are going for custom-made devices, we guys um, have the right solution for you, which is ADB Enrollment, so that you can enroll even your custom Android devices with the MDM solution. And the one that we didn't discuss would be your Windows Enrollment, wherein you have two options again, using Azure Autopilot, which is similar to your Apple Business Manager or your Zeta Touch Enrollment, and the Windows ICD method, which would be similar to your Apple Configurator enrollment. So this is the enrollment structure under your MDM solution. Now it's time to look into how you can push corporate configurations to your managed devices so that they are ready for corporate use. So corporate configurations are basically a passcode policy in order to secure your devices 
and you know on only upon the right authentication would we allow um, you know the user to log into the device itself and also go through some intricate setups like Wi-Fi, VPN, email services or exchange services. Something that are pretty basic in all of the corporate companies right now to single sign on so that your users don't have to remember all the passwords and provide the same password to each and every application. And you can also customize the wallpaper on your corporate devices. So for that, you would have to configure a profile. And that's where we come into the device management tab. So under the device management tab, you would navigate to profiles. So over profile, you would create a new profile, say for Apple devices again, you would give a meaningful name, say. And then click on continue. So over here in the passcode policy, you have the ability. So for certain users, say, who were uh, who joined in the previous session where I was discussing about kiosk mode, and if you'd like the devices to not have a passcode at all while they are in kiosk mode, you can go for this option so that the users can never set a passcode at all. Or if you'd like to specifically have a passcode set, and that passcode can be a simple value or an alphanumeric value, then you can go for the passcode profile. You can choose the minimum length, the number of special characters that are required, the maximum idle time before the auto lock kicks in, all of the details that you would like to have a passcode policy with. So once you have configured the right details, all you'd have to do is just save this profile and publish it. Once the profile has been published, you'd go back to the groups and devices page wherein you have added all your devices. So remember, once the enrollment is complete, you would assign the user wherein the devices would be assigned to a group. So once a group has been provided, all you'd have to do is just click on the group name, choose action, associate profile, and then filter out your required post profile. So it's passcode 10101. I choose select and automatically, this profile would be distributed to all the devices under that particular group. So the users are forced to set up a passcode in their device and the time limit is 60 minutes. But suddenly my manager comes up to me and says, hey, we are revamping the system a little bit. So the, the passcode has to be a little bit more secure. So it's not gonna suffice if they are gonna have four digits, they now need to have eight digits and they have to remember it somehow. So all I'd have to do is just make sure that I modify the profile and update it on my devices. So I go into profiles, I hit on modify profile, I click on continue, and I would change the passcode length to eight and special characters at three, just to make their lives difficult. So once this is done, I would save the profile and publish it. This would in turn update the version number, which is to which will bump it to version two rather than version one. So now I would have to update the theme on the devices as well. So if I choose this particular group, I head into profiles, I can see that right now the, the group or the devices under that group have profile version one. But the latest version that has been published is version two, which has all of the difficult stuff, right from an eight digit passcode to three special characters. So to give them a living hell, I go ahead and I would distribute the latest version of the profile itself. So once the latest version has been pushed out, automatically my users would now have to configure a new passcode for their devices. Now it's time to create a profile for your Wi-Fi, your email and single sign-on services, ones that are common for any solution. So I've already pre-configured a profile for you guys right now. So let me just open that particular profile. So here you have the profile details, the ones that I've just configured. But if you hit on modify over here, you'd have the entire list waiting for you. Right from Wi-Fi, where you can automatically connect the device to a Wi-Fi solution that you have mentioned over here. You can also configure your VPN services as well. So 
So if you guys are using any VPN solution, you can configure the VPN solution in the device so that you know any app server communication would take place to that particular VPN. And you can also force the VPN to work only if specific apps are open. So that would be configure the per app VPN policy. So only if these two applications are running would the VPN work. The next would be the commonly used email service, which is Exchange Active Sync. So be it Office 365 or an exchange on premise, it's just a button away. And all you'd have to do is just provide the necessary details. So once you have provided the details, you will see that the username or in case of exchange on premise, the domain name and the email address are all percentage email percentage or percentage domain name percentage. So this means that we will automatically fetch the, the, time, the variables from your enrollment tab. So while enrolling the device, we assigned users to the device. So the assigned user details would be pulled and we would set up the email services in your devices. So if you'd like to go for some advanced settings, you can and go for whether you'd like to enable the OAuth, if you're going for say Office 365, whether you'd like to prevent the moving of messages to other mail accounts, if you are allowing the users to add other mail accounts in the device, etc. So all these advanced settings are available as well, and then you can save. But in case you're not going for Exchange Active Sync, you have your own email service, then you can configure your the same server details, your outgoing and your incoming mail server details over here, and we would set up the account as per the details mentioned over here. We also have enterprise single sign-on setup. So this is where um, you know we would make um, our end users' life a bit easy so that they don't have to sign in to all the applications that are distributed over here. So if the user is going to provide the same credentials. All they have to do is just configure this part over here, which is enterprise single sign-on, so that we automatically fetch all the details for them, and they would just have to provide their password once. And this would sign into all of the applications that are mentioned out over here. And at last, you have managed web domains, wherein if a document is downloaded from a particular website, we would allow only your managed applications to open that particular document. So this would be the basic profile configuration that you'd like to go for. And one part that I did miss out is your wallpaper. So if you'd like to go and splash out, say, your company logo on your device home screen and lock screen, you can go ahead and upload your picture over here, the JPEG file or the PNG file over here, and we would automatically apply your picture as a wallpaper or say as a home screen or a lock screen wallpaper on your devices. So once this is done, all you have to do is just publish the profile, go ahead and you can assign the particular profile to your group. So once this has been assigned, automatically all the details, the email services, your single sign-on, everything would kick into play and your devices would be good to go. Now for our next part, which is how to prevent unmanaged devices from accessing corporate emails. So corporate emails is pretty much the most important thing when it comes to managing a service because there are gonna be a lot of attachments coming in, a lot of emails that would be here and out over there. You know, let's not get into all the email links, etc. So in order to prevent your end users from accessing corporate email in unmanaged devices, basically devices that are not enrolled with the MDM solution, we have come up with the right feature, which is conditional exchange access. So from the picture that is seen over here, you can figure out that only the managed devices would have access to your exchange server or your Office 365 services, while unmanaged devices would not have access to your Office 365 or your Exchange server. So this is a feature that is present in the on-premise edition, and it's almost completed in the cloud-based solution as well. 
And now for the prerequisites. First, your Active Directory has to be integrated with the MDM solution. You would have to enable the self enrollment option. And if you're specifically running Exchange Server 2010, then you'd have to enable the basic authentication in that machine so that we can integrate with your Exchange Server. So we integrate, as I mentioned, this is how the conditional exchange access work. We would integrate the Exchange Server with the MDM server. We would enforce a conditional exchange access policy and only the devices that are enrolled with the MDM would get access to your exchange services. So it's kind of like the MDM server acts like a firewall, we could say, and only allows certain requests to get through to your exchange services. And this is how it's done. So first you have to set up your conditional exchange access with the right credentials. Once this is done, we would automatically fetch all the mailboxes and the devices that are already in contact with your exchange server. So all you have to do now is to create an access policy. So I click on configure and here I can enforce this policy to be applied on all the users or just a selected group of users. And if I don't want to get in trouble with my upper management, I can click on the click here option in order to exclude specific users alone so that the top level management people can access their emails from any device. And I also have an option to allow the users to have a grace period to enroll their mobile devices with the MDM solution. So this makes sure that we would send out an email over to the devices that are trying to access the Exchange server but are not enrolled with the MDM. So they would be provided with the self-enrollment URL that you see on your enrollment tab. So this would automatically be sent as an email to the user once in every 24 hours for the next three days. And if they are not going to enroll their devices in those particular three days, on the fourth day, they won't have access to the email services in the device that is not enrolled with the MDM solution. So once the policy has been applied, you would have a page like this. The username and the email address, something called as the exchange or the EA identifier, exchange access link identifier. So this is the one that we collect during enrollment and the one that I was talking about wherein if a particular detail passes through the MDM server and it checks with the MDM server, this would be the one. So if this is already registered with the MDM, we would allow that particular device to have access to your exchange services. If a particular EAS identifier is not present under the MDM solution, which means the device is not enrolled with the MDM, then we would block the device. So this would complete our major points for this training session. So now for some scenarios and solutions. So any IT administrator would go through a number of scenarios, but I just handpicked five scenarios for you guys. So scenario one is where my organization uses Windows devices, and I would like to control these devices in bulk without any user interaction. So that's where our automated structure for your Windows enrollment, which is Windows Autopilot or the Azure Autopilot would kick into play. So it's pretty similar to your Apple Business Manager or your Zero Touch portal. You create an account with Azure, you integrate or you can add all your devices into that particular account. You integrate that Azure account with the MDM solution and automatically on turning on these devices, they will be enrolled with the MDM itself. Scenario two, say for example, one employee has moved from one department to the other. So the old profile and restrictions should be removed and the new one should be applied on the device. So I don't want to go specifically to the device itself and make the change. What I can do is I can move over to the MDM portal 
I have the device management tab over here. I go into groups and devices and say, for example, I move into this particular group. And this user has to now be moved to another group, which is the finance department, which is a pretty big jump from the head chart to the finance department. And once you hit on select, automatically this device would be moved over to your new group. And all of the profiles and applications of the old group would be removed and the ones in the new would be applied. Next would be scenario three. I want the downloads from our internal website to be viewed only using a managed app. And is this possible? Well, yes, it is possible using the MDM solution and that is through the profiles option. So take for example, I am modifying an existing profile over here. I move into the profile details and over here I have managed web domains. So, this would secure the documents downloaded from particular websites that are mentioned over here, ensuring that only the managed applications can view these documents. So if you are going to distribute an application, that application would be deemed as a managed app, and only that application can have access to the document itself. So all I have to do is just provide the URL over here, and any document downloaded from this particular site can be opened only by the particular applications. Next would be scenario four. So scenario four is a pretty common one that most of our admins want. They don't want the users to remove the devices from management. Well, that is you know, the common case. You don't want your devices to go unmanaged. And that's where the MDM comes into play. Once again, it would be under the enrollment tab and we would start off things with Android devices. So here under Android, you have MEMDM app. You have multiple settings over here. And one specific setting is to allow the user to remove the MDM app, which by default would be set to no to please all you guys, because we don't want the end users to remove the application at any point. Next, we would slide down to Windows and over here, you can also prevent the user from deleting the MDM workspace account from the devices itself. But when it comes to Apple devices, however, since Apple is all about privacy, only the devices that are enrolled using your Apple Business Manager cannot or would not have the option to remove the profile itself. But there is one other way where you can work around for your personal devices where under the enrollment settings, you have the option to notify the administrator when a device becomes unmanaged. So this makes sure that you catch a guy red-handed if they are going to unenroll their devices from the MDM, and you'd also have a huge red marker over here saying that unmanaged and the user has unmanaged the device. Now for scenario five, I would like to encrypt all the Mac devices in my organization. So does Manage or Mobile Device Manager Plus allow bulk encryption? Well, yes, we have our file vault encryption option. So I move down to profiles once again, choose a particular profile, hit on modify, and I would come down over here to file vault encryption. So I can encrypt using a personal recovery key that would only be present with the end user or an institutional recovery key that would be provided with the IT team or the best combination would be to go for a personal and an institutional recovery key just to make sure it's super secure and both of you would be having access to the encryption itself. And now for some questions that were raised during our previous training sessions. Question number one, I have purchased a few devices, neither directly from Apple nor from its reseller. Can I enroll it with the Apple Business Manager? Since this has been a huge request from most of Apple's customers, Apple has brought in a small team starting from iOS 11.0, wherein you can most certainly add your devices that are not purchased from the right part, which is Apple or its resellers, into the ABM 
using your Apple Configurator services. So if you had remembered, I had specifically clicked on the option to add the device to the device enrollment program. And when I was progressing through the profile or through the blueprint at that time, I was hit with the page wherein I had to provide my DEP server credentials. So the same would happen over here. You would provide the DEP server credentials, the one page where I was stopped at, and then process the request. This would automatically add any device that is running iOS 11.0 and above to the Apple Business Manager portal that you have created. Now for question two. How does Mobile Device Manager Plus protect the server from unauthorized access? So all I have to do now is to go into the admin portal because this is where my users are going to have access to the solution itself. So I can secure the authentication first with two-factor authentication. So my other administrators or technicians who would be accessing the MDM portal for managing the devices would have to go through a two-factor authentication. And I can set a strong password policy to even give them or even give my admins a tough time who are giving my end users a tough time with the password policy. So once this password policy is set, the users or your access to the MDM service itself would be secure. Question number three. Is it possible to apply a profile created for one platform to devices running on other platforms? Well, this is a simple answer. No, we cannot apply the profile that is created for Apple to be applied on Android devices as they are working are entirely different. Question number four. I would want to apply different policies as separate profiles. Is it possible to apply multiple profiles to multiple devices? Yes, it is possible to apply multiple profiles to multiple devices at the same time. But all you have to make sure is that you don't put in certain contradicting profiles. Say, when we are discussing about passcode, you can either force the user to set up a passcode or force the OS to prevent the user from not setting up a passcode. So if you're trying to create two profiles, two contradicting profiles, and apply to the device, the OS will get confused. Again, if you apply two kiosk profiles, the OS will be confused as to take up which kiosk profile. So you just have to make sure that you don't you know, hit any roadblocks when you are applying multiple profiles. And question number four is what will happen if I apply two profiles with contradictory restrictions. Well, when it comes to restrictions, I would say Apple has an upper hand. So take for example, you are creating a profile. So let me just show it out on the screen over here, which would be simple. So I come into device management, profiles, and I am going ahead and modifying this profile over here and moving down to restrictions. Say, for example, I am restricting the camera application in profile one. I'm publishing the profile and pushing it out to the devices. So now the camera has been restricted. Say I'm creating another profile, profile number two, where I have allowed the restriction. So when I apply this particular profile right now, what would happen is that Apple would take a look at two profiles. It would see which one is the most secure one and it would restrict the camera application. So that's how Apple processes this particular request. But we would take a similar example for Android. So let's consider this is an Android profile for the time being. I'm restricting camera in profile one, and I'm applying it to the device. The camera app is now disabled, and the user will not be able to access it. Now I'm creating profile number two. But what I have done is I have alerted the camera setting. I'm publishing the profile, I'm applying it to the device. Now what happens in Android's case is that it would overwrite all the previous restrictions with the ones from this new profile. So profile two, which now has camera turned on or allowed, 
would be applied on the device and the device end user would have a fun time using the camera application. So thank you all for your time. Have a great day and a great weekend.